On December 3, 2011, the Gotham City Beard Alliance hosted the second annual New York City Beard Competition at Club Europa in Brooklyn. It was a spectacular event, but more than that, it was filled with both the glamour and the intrigue that could only mark a truly first-rate beard competition. The excitement began as soon as we entered the club. The media was out in force to document the event, including, of course, a camera crew from the IFC documentary series Whisker Wars. And while members of the media spoke to many competitors, both male and female, they seemed to focus especially on two of the bigger names to emerge from the first season of Whisker Wars, Jack Passion and Arnie Bielefeld. Beyond many of the bearding community's own celebrities, there was, as noted in the New York Times write-up, at least one outside celebrity in attendance as well. Ever since she uttered the words, I like your beard. At the end of her hit single, Your Love Is My Drug, I always wondered how deep Cash's affection for beards really went. Well, I don't have to wonder anymore. Although I somehow managed not to get any video of her, Kesha was all over at the competition, getting photos and footage for her new blog located at putyourbeardinmymouth.tumblr.com. And her love of beards extends even to her main website, which is offering this new beard t-shirt for sale. But turning back to the competition itself, it was finally time for the festivities to begin. Our hosts Mike O'Connor and Adam Wren took the stage to announce that the evening's proceeds would be going to charity. We, uh, we're here to educate and eradicate breast cancer, so all the proceeds tonight go to the Keeper Breast Foundation. They're, uh, they're an amazing organization. And then it was time for the pre-show entertainment to begin. Uh, we're going to entertain you with some, a little bit of go-go, have some drinks, and we're going to start the competition in a few minutes. <laughs> Perhaps it speaks to the essential gentlemanly nature of the Beardsmen in attendance, or perhaps it merely reflects the men's intense focus on the upcoming competition. But far more women than men actually approached the dancers to stuff dollar tips in their garters and bras. Finally, it was time for the competition itself to begin. There were six judges, including the vegan black metal chef on the far left, and veteran Beardsman Paul Beiser, second from the left, and the Count Justinian, second from the right. First up was the fake beard and mustache category. After the women, the competition moved right into the six men's categories. McGregor!
contracts and the guys it makes jealous. After all of the competitors had their opportunity to impress the judges in the crowd, Adam introduced a number of burlesque and sideshow acts while the scores were tabulated. And while they kept the crowd entertained, these acts, like the go-go dancers at the start of the evening, used up valuable time, time that it turned out we didn't have. All right, we're going to do things a little bit differently since we're on a curfew. When Mike retook the stage for the award presentations, the house lights were up. The club wanted us out, immediately. The competition had run long, and the venue was eager to kick us out and get its regular Saturday night dance party underway. Accordingly, Mike had to speed through the award ceremony. Even so, the crowd and competitors remained upbeat as the winners were announced and prizes awarded. The final award was in the Full Beard Natural category. For this division, four finalists were called to the stage, including Brian Nelson, the second place finisher in Full Beard Natural at the 2011 Nationals, and Alan Demling. Notably absent from the finalist lineup, however, were two of the best known names, Whisker Wars stars Arnie Bielefeld, who took second place in Full Beard Natural at last year's New York competition, and Jack Passion, who last year took first. Indeed, at tonight's competition, Jack had inspired strong responses from the crowd, including both booing hey, no booing, no booing. Come on. and tremendous cheering. But it appeared he did not make as strong an impression on the judges. In any event, as to the four finalists who were called to the stage, Mike announced that the scoring of the full beard natural category was too close to call and left it to the crowd to determine the winner by audience applause. The first two finalists were quickly eliminated, but Alan Demling and Brian Nelson seemed equally popular with the spectators. And number 47! In fact, Brian and Alan were so evenly matched that Mike had to go back and forth several times.
After several rounds of back and forth, Mike finally announced that the winner was Alan. Alan graciously accepted the first place plaque and the hearty congratulations from Brian and the other competitors. And as the club staff kicked everyone out of the venue, the cameras, at least for this night, focused on the new champions. Outside, the competitors and fans congregated to meet up with friends and discuss the evening's results. Judge Paul Beiser, a longtime competitor, discussed the outcome with Arnie. I was surprised you and Jack didn't show up there. Totally surprised. But in fact, it turns out that Jack, at least, should have been among the four full beard natural finalists. The day after the contest, Mike publicly explained that, Due to all the confusion caused by the club rushing to get us out during this score tabulation process, he inadvertently called number 53 to the stage as one of the finalists for the audience to vote on, rather than Jack's number 33. When the mistake was discovered after the contest, Mike immediately explained the situation personally to Jack, and then posted about it on Facebook so that everyone would know what happened. And, based on the comments the post received, the community as a whole were very supportive, understanding that mistakes like this can and will happen. Indeed, Alan and Brian immediately offered to return their award plaques. Mike declined their offer, explaining that there is no way to tell how Jack would have placed in the audience vote, and so the only thing to do now is to move forward. Conspiracy theorists may have their say about this whole situation, but I think Alan and Brian's offer perfectly captures what is best about the bearding world, especially when Alan went on to write that, I don't do it for the trophies anyway. I do it for the camaraderie and the good times, which were there in spades. That single quote captures for me all that is best about the bearding world. I'm sure that everyone wishes the mistake had not occurred, and that Jack had correctly been called to the stage as a finalist. He is a worthy competitor who I genuinely feel has also brought a lot of entertainment value to the world of bearding. But to me, the question of who won or lost at a beard contest is largely irrelevant. As Alan said, beard events are primarily an occasion to gather with friends, have fun, and see inspiring facial hair. The competition is just the excuse. Indeed, a fundamental reason to grow facial hair is as a reflection of one's individuality and personal style. Should how someone else judges your facial hair really matter, when the whole point is just to be true to yourself? Stop,